With that, I'm going to start rolling. I can... So, if you see this, I've got three pages. Um, Aunt Foley likes to keep me on track. I get more water than I was going to pick up. She forgets that I'm wandering back and forth a little bit. You know, my wife's been trying to keep me on track for 33 years and it hasn't worked, so eventually she'll figure that out. So, with that, I want to start out. I'm going to introduce the school board members and then I'll get started on all my stuff that Mrs. Foley put together. Okay? Um, school board members Brad Schaefer. Joan Rich. That's the only two I see here. I know Mrs. Dudley is who is supposed to talk is off overseas on a trip, so she won't be talking. So at this time I'm going to ask Mr. Schaefer to come up and welcome you and uh, get you started. And I have to do a mic change here. Good morning. Ms. Dudley wanted to be here, but obviously she can't be, so uh, she sends her best and hopes for the best. Um, so I've been asked to talk, and I know this is kind of fun because um, John gets a little bit nervous every time I get a mic in my face because he never knows what I'm going to say. And quite honestly, I don't know what I'm going to say, so we'll go from there. Um, but anyway, on behalf of the board and the community that we represent, uh, welcome back. And for those of you who are new, and there's plenty of you here, welcome to the team. We're really happy to have you, and we're really excited to have you. This is a really exciting year, uh, maybe more so than most. Um, for, the for the first time in a couple years, we're walking in without the, uh, the black cloud of COVID hanging over us. And I know that we're not through that completely yet, but we don't have quite the um, concern we've had the last couple of years. We don't, have, we don't have to worry about what we're going to do on a daily basis. Um, and with all the work that you have done um, over the last couple of years, if something were to happen, we know we've got a good plan in place where we can switch gears if we have to. Let's not do that. But it's very exciting, not just for beginning of school year, but, but, but to not have that situation anymore. Um, anyway, another thing is we finally got our space. We have our buildings. We got, we got our intermediate building started. And, that's great. and so now we have prayer, a nice building. We got the intermediate school, the intermediate building, middle school, high school. Um, we've got our ALC that we've built recently. We've got a community education building we're building. We've got administration building. We are set up for the future. We are good to go. But those things, those are buildings. Brick and mortar and whatever other materials they use to build them. Brick and mortar, they're buildings. They become schools because of you. Because everyone in this room, every position in this room makes those buildings, those inanimate objects, schools. And that's what's important. So give yourself a round of applause because you are the ones who, who make our buildings work. And, thank you. and again, on behalf of the board and the community, I want to thank each and every one of you for choosing education, choosing to be educators. Whatever position, you're educators. You're taking our children and you're making them into great people of the future. And we thank you for that. And, and you are heroes in all of our minds. So, with that, thank you very much, and I'll, I'll let John talk, because he'll talk longer than me. But when you leave today, when you leave today, you go to your buildings, and you turn those buildings into schools. Okay? Thank you very much. Have a great year.
So if you're wondering what we're doing changing microphones here, there are a few people at home that are zooming in. We want to thank them for getting in on this, and we appreciate that. So I'm going to get rolling with the three pages that were put. Glenda, you mentioned something before that I should announce. Do you remember what it was? Okay, I don't either. So, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we go on, Glenda brought up a good point, and I'm going to ask a little crowd participation. All those of you who are District 518 grads, can you stand up? If you look around, we've had a number of our graduates who have returned home to work with our students and work with our children and your children. And boy, do we appreciate that. I want to talk about a couple things that have gone on this last summer that have led up to this. So we're starting a new year, a whole bunch of new adventures. We have new buildings, staff, administrators, rearranged buildings and classrooms, and of course there'll be new students coming to us. I guess the point I want to make is I'm glad you're choosing to be a part of District 518 because that's the environment we're in. You can go anywhere you want in the United States and get a job. There are jobs everywhere. And I can tell you that in our district, we have hired over 100 new people this summer, or early spring to summer. There's lots of new faces. But I want to thank you for choosing to either stay or come to work in Worthington. It's a great place. I started here 20 years ago, a long time. Um, back then, the Worthington motto was, you'll come to love us. Now somebody threw that out, like the bathwater. They thought it was kind of sappy. I can tell you that I still believe in that motto that exists, you'll come to love Worthington. So those of you who are new, there are lots of things to do in this community. You just have to search a little bit. And those of you who are, were a part of the Kiwanis luncheon, you can hear them talk about all the great things that are going on. Sometimes Worthington gets a little bit of a bad rap here and there for a variety of reasons. But I can tell you it's a great community, it's a great place, it's an awesome district, and that's because of all of you who either do it in the school buildings or you're part of the community and participate that way. Ms. Foley, I'm off topic again. So, with that, since the end of the last school year, I just want to run through a few things that have actually gone on. We had teachers moving to the new intermediate. We had people moving within the current buildings. So they're assigned new classrooms. All that occurred this summer, and our custodians went above and beyond in moving us. They were well organized. They got things done. And that's above their daily cleaning of the buildings, waxing floors, and all that work. So I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate their efforts. There was only a little whining. But they did it, and they did it with a smile on their face most days. And in some cases, they even conned me into carrying a couple of boxes. So with that, I want to thank the custodial crew for their efforts and work. Likewise, I want to thank the cooks this morning for preparing breakfast. Yeah, it's okay. They do good work. Oh, 
book, excuse me. Somebody decided to call me. Which one of the administrators did that? All I know was my kids. They don't think I do anything most days, so they just call randomly. The other part that's been a big major change is the technology staff. You have a huge amount of new devices and equipment, as well as the work of making sure all the buildings are prepared, particularly the new building. So those folks also worked really hard, and they had some summer help, but they're still one short. Is that right? Yes. So if you know anybody who wants a technology position out there, I would tell you, please have them take a look at the website and apply. I think I mentioned this again, but I'm getting old, so I forget, so I'll say it again, because it has an impact. We have over 100 new employees this year alone. <laughs> of that, we have roughly 45 new teachers, some that don't start till mid-year, but we have 45 new folks in the classroom teaching. And we did the whole administrative fruit basket upset. So just so you know, I'm going to go through them just because not everybody works. You have your own building. You might know your administrator, but you might not know the other. So I'll go through and hopefully my memory is still good. Uh, Mr. Noble, who will be the director of instruction. Mr. Brands, who moved from the learning center to the assistant principal at the high school. Mr. Hastings, who has now moved from the assistant principal to the high school principal, Mackenzie, I never get your last, I never say your last name, correct. Mackenzie as officially the assistant special ed director, Helgeson, right? Cool, got it. Katie Clark as the intermediate school principal, Allison Edrum as the special ed director, Corey Van Briesen as the assistant Middle, uh, intermediate school principal, almost scooter, I got that one. Tony Bartman as the middle school principal. Casey Hertz as the assistant middle school principal. Spencer Wenicke as the dean of students. He's going to be at the learning center. We might add a few jobs due to what MDE did to us with five. So he's going to be a busy character. Dakota Lawrence, who is the Learning Center Principal. Carrie, you didn't switch. Well, you did. So, does everybody know Carrie? <laughs> Heidi Meyer is the Prairie School Principal. I think I got everybody. Oh, wait. Ann Foley, Communication Director. She didn't switch. I told you I was going to pick on you today. <laughs> I might add a few jobs after this today. Um, they're all the same over there, except uh, Mr. Skog is now the Director of Operations rather than the Director of Management Services. So we had a title change. So that's kind of that one. Um, oh, yes. We served 550 kids this summer in summer school while we were moving, while we were adjusting in the buildings. The reason I'm putting some of these numbers out because some of you, one, don't know, you don't have, you're not around the summer, so you don't realize the amount of work that goes on. And I want you to understand, to get to day, next Monday, it takes a lot of effort on everybody's part. And uh, it's been a busy summer. That's why I bought a new hat for fishing. It looks like brand new because I haven't used it. So I was going to bring it along as a special effects, but I forgot it. So a couple other things. The administrative offices, the building over there with the fence around it now. If you're looking for the district office, it's in the west building. And we're in the 
northwest corner of the building. And we're adapting right now to try and figure things out and how it's going to work, but it seems to be going fairly well. Also, the district took over the supervision of Cable 3 or WGTN, so we'll be kind of in charge of managing that. Um, oh, yes. I just want to make sure everybody really understands how much I appreciate all your efforts. And it's been a year of change, a year of adjustment. COVID played a major role in how the last two years have functioned. And I'm really, really hoping this summer all of you had a chance to rejuvenate and recoup um, and be ready for the new school year. And the piece that I will tell you is our students need 100% of your efforts because of COVID and the lag behind and all the other stuff that's going on in the world. They're going to take a lot of energy on your parts to make sure they continue to learn and grow. So I'm going to thank you up front. I'm going to thank you for being a part of District 518 and choosing to be a part of District 518. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to see students excel because it'll be nice to start the year off like normal. So, Mr. Schaefer did steal a little bit of what I was going to cover, but I'm going to at least share some of this related to buildings and projects. Prairie Elementary has a new uh, ECSE playground. It's on the front of the building. Nice addition. Um, also out there, the five years ago, the school board approved doing a safe routes to, or participating in safe routes to school. You'll see coming out on the west side of the building that comes out to Nowood will be a new walking path, bike path. So if you haven't been on the west side there, um, you'll see a gravel path that should get concreted or paved fairly soon. Um, Prairie Elementary gym floor, I, I actually haven't been out there to look yet, but they say it looks awesome. It was completely sanded, painted, and refinished this summer. Now I just have to get the Prairie gym folks not to put tape all over it. Come on, Mr. Marquardt. <laughs> I think we even put some X's on there to kind of avoid that, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. Um, Prairie Elementary will have a discovery room that will provide interactive opportunities for kids in STEM activities, along with the intermediate school. And hopefully this week, the remaining sod goes in so it'll actually look finished. Um, out at least on the front side of it. Uh, lots of work done there. And if you have not had the opportunity to go through the building, um, we'd love to have you go through and walk through. I know we had about, I'm guessing about 75 people last Monday after work come and walk through. It was a lot of fun to see them uh, walk through and get a few, I only had a few give me feedback, but they were kind of on a mission, so. Page two, Doug. Oh yes, the Worthington High School gym. Uh, out in the hallway, you'll notice that we're in the process of putting in new interactive panel. This will have information for fine arts, academics, athletics, and kind of history of District 518. So hopefully that'll come soon. I don't have a timeline. Um, we also have a project here at the high school that will be going on. It'll be the beginning of September, and then probably late November, December. And that's replacing four air handlers at this building. It'd be 
over the art room, the auxiliary gym areas. So um, just FYI, we're going to have to work around that. High school folks, you might have to be a little flexible so we can get people in and out and get that done efficiently. Likewise, at Prairie in the spring, the chiller will be replaced. So that's a, in there, those are indoor air quality things that we're doing right now. Um, community Ed, if any of you have managed to wander through over there, that should be 100% roughly enclosed in the next month. Um, parking lot should start to go in this week, hopefully they show up. And just so you kind of have an idea of what it's like, um, they have probably half the sheetrocking done and they're actually tiling in some of the restrooms already, so it's moving right along real quick. And that's projected to be ready by the end of January, but we'll see how that goes. Um, with that then, the district office that is supposed to be ready at the end of February, but we have kind of a month delay, so I suspect it will be the end of March. Hopefully they'll be rocking and rolling over there and you'll see lots of activity. Um, one of the, I forgot about the community ed facility, it'll be nice. One of the unique parts of the community ed building, and I, oh yeah, sure, Johnson, isn't here, but there's actually kind of a meeting room, big gym type space. There's an indoor playground and an outdoor playground. But the unique part of that is actually you can walk around, you can open the doors and there's kind of a small walking track. So it'll be a nice little addition. So, schedule I might have to add two or add a lift here. <laughs> oh. I know that was fully. Like I said, she always tries to keep me on track, so it doesn't work very well. <laughs> so as we start our new adventures and start moving forward, I want to remind you about tomorrow speaker at Memorial Auditorium for everyone. It's from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Joe Beckman. His message will be about reclaiming the human connection. So if you noticed, I kind of, not intentionally by the way, talked about the need for you to welcome your students back, be committed to your students, give them 100%. It's kind of tying into it. I didn't plan that, by the way, but it just worked out. As I keep telling the administrator, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. His, so this event is for all District 518 employees, custodians, food service, parents, teachers, everyone in community ed, office staff, school nurses, and so on. I want to also remind you, we are all one team. So the importance of everyone participating is vital. If we're truly going to make a difference, we have to be committed as one team. So I'm hoping to see all your faces as well as those who decide to skip this and miss all the fun, which is usually our custodians, by the way, or at least part of them. I would love to see everybody there and we fill that auditorium. One thing I want to mention is the administrators uh, had an in-service this week. It sounded like it was awesome. Um, they have been doing self-growth activities as well. Just like many of you over the summer, have been working on that. So before I wrap up, there are a few things I do have to mention. And Carmen didn't tell me, but on the HR side, 
there are some changes that will be coming and much to our demise, we're still having to work through it. The service co-op statewide has decided to make a change and I, I'm going to apologize right up front because we didn't know this was coming. We have one year to figure it out. But they no longer will support ASOP or Time Clock Plus, which means we may have to go to a whole new system. Again, everybody's kind of used to what we're doing right now, or the majority of you, but we have to make, make, make those changes, which also might mean moving from smart, smart finance to a different approach. So. Um, we'll cross our fingers, see if we can figure this out, but it'll be a year of planning. There are some other initiatives that we're going to be doing a year of planning. One of the initiatives will be to start a four-year-old preschool program, and we'll begin planning and trying to work on that to start next fall. Um, there is another, there is a couple other initiatives, but we'll get that word out as we start working on some of those things. But again, we're not standing still. We're not, we want to continue to grow. We want to continue to look at what we can do to support student learning and grow our system to even a much better system. But it's going to take a lot of work on everyone in this room is part to get those accomplished. So, I think I'm done to some extent. I haven't picked it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. I will mention before I go on, though, um, one of the things that I've talked to administrators and they're going to be talking to you about as a group is unpaid leave. Uh, you will need to speak with the administrators before you enter that into the system. Okay, so unpaid leave. Uh, and you can't just enter it in the ASAP anymore and expect it to be approved. So just FYI for you. They'll give you more information on that. So again, oh, the most, one of the things I know most people like is food. EMW lunch today will be in the high school cafeteria. What time? Noon? 11.30. Okay? So those who plan to attend, uh, high school cafeteria. So with that, I'm going to try and wrap up here. Um, I do have to kind of say, I've had a lot of questions this year of, when are you going to retire? <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. And then I had somebody also kind of get me this weekend and say, you know, your hair's getting a little gray. Actually, they said a lot of gray. And it's getting thin, by the way. So, I have not figured out retirement. I'll just tell you at this point, and like most of you, uh, the economy, the all that bunch stuff is, is maybe changing my plans. I, I can tell you, when I first came here, my intent was to retire at 58. That didn't work out very well. That was four years ago. So, we'll see how much longer I go. But I'll just answer to everybody right now, when are you going to retire? I don't know. I still feel there's a lot of work, and I still feel that I have things to contribute. Um, but in the same token, I have a grandson who's a little over two, and now a new granddaughter. And I didn't get to go fishing much this summer. And Oh, yeah, hunting season's coming up. I might be a little scared for a while since I need to go on vacation. A couple people told me that I was getting a little cranky. <laughs> Imagine that. 
Might have been the administrators were including me in, I was a little cranky. But I can tell you some of that comes from trying to get things organized, the additional uh, things that have gone on this year. And all of you, I want to make sure you understand. I may be a little cranky, but I'm happy you're here. And I'm trying to avoid being cranky. So it's okay to tell me if I get a little cranky. Okay? And if you don't want to tell me, just tell Jody. She'll tell me. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to forewarn you. I was going to pick on you. I do want to tell you I am committed to all of you in this room, our students, and our community. And we have so much more to do to make this the best district in the state. And I can't, I can't do it myself. I need everyone in this room to help step up and accomplish that. And it's going to take 100% commitment on your part and 100% commitment on my part. We're in this together, and I really want to say thank you for being a part of District 518. So with that, have a great day. We've got some wonderful things that are planned, and I appreciate you putting up with me today.